Currently, the temperature is 68 degrees under fair skies. for your area. Tuesday, we'll see fair skies. Look for rainy conditions on Wednesday. And on Thursday, expect fair skies. Tropical storm Claudette continues to churn the Gulf of Mexico tonight. Some 320 miles east of Brownsville, Texas, as of 10 o'clock uh, Central Daylight Time. And of course, we'll be getting a new update on the position not too long from now. Uh, was 25.7 north, 92.3 west as of 10 o'clock central time. Winds have increased a bit. Pressure has dipped down to 90, 992 millibars, and Claudette is drifting to the west. Most of the thunderstorm activity continues to be east and northeast of the center of circulation, still indicating that uh, upper-level winds are shearing the system a bit, although it appears that in the last couple of frames, the thunderstorms have developed a little bit farther to the west, closer to the center of circulation. Here's the uh, hurricane watch, which has been posted, remains in effect for the Texas coast from Port O'Connor, southward into parts of Mexico, from the U.S.-Mexico uh, border down to Rio San Fernando, hurricane watch uh, in place, meaning hurricane conditions are possible within 36 hours. The movement, now Claudette meandered out here in the Gulf all day long, in fact, as compared to last night at this time, it's only about 25 miles closer to the uh, coastline than it was 24 hours ago. So the steering currents are very weak, although during the day on Monday, Claudette is expected to pick up a little bit of speed, head west towards the north coast of Mexico or the south coast of Texas. If that happens, then potential landfall could be sometime on Tuesday. Tuesday night or possibly very early Wednesday morning, just shortly after midnight, Tuesday night, in fact. So that's the latest on Tropical Storm Claudette. Elsewhere in the Gulf, and especially down here in the Caribbean, things are quiet, though an easterly wave flared up and brought some heavy rain to Puerto Rico and parts of Hispaniola today. And out in the Atlantic, we're watching a very large easterly wave headed west. We'll keep an eye on that. Enrique, that was out here in the eastern Pacific last night, totally gone at this hour. The last advisory was issued uh, earlier today on that system. Back to the states, severe thunderstorm watch, a couple of them in place over the northern plains. And while all the watches have been canceled in the south, we still have a severe thunderstorm warning for Lincoln County. That's in southeast Arkansas. Storm could produce large hail and damaging winds during the next few minutes. Large area of rain with embedded thunderstorms, southeast Mississippi and southern sections of um, Alabama. Still a stormy night in North Georgia, uh, although not nearly as uh, volatile as it was earlier tonight. Some of the heavier storms on right along Interstate 20, about midway between uh, Atlanta and Augusta. And still a bit soggy in North Carolina, heaviest rain up near the North Carolina-Virginia border. Storms are weakening in the south tonight, but they'll fire back up and become intense in isolated spots on Monday afternoon. Charlotte tops at 85, 88 in New Orleans, and a hot, steamy 97 in Dallas. It's a quiet night in the northeast. Well, down in the... forecast.
Wednesday, we'll see a chance of thunderstorms. Look for fair skies on Thursday. And on Friday, expect a chance of thunderstorms. Here's the latest on Tropical Storm Claudette. 65 mile per hour winds were just 10 miles an hour from a hurricane. Would that happen? Could it happen? It's a possibility. As a matter of fact, as this moves toward the northwest at 6 and 310 miles east-southeast of Corpus Christi, Texas, the National Hurricane Center has already issued a hurricane watch. So that means there is the possibility of it becoming a hurricane along, uh, say, the southern Texas coast and the northeastern Mexico. That hurricane watch is in effect. This is new. If you just woke up, this is new from yesterday and last night. Now a tropical storm watch from High Island, Texas to Matagorda, Texas. That means tropical storm force conditions possible over the next 36 hours. And we are concerned about coastal flooding along portions of the Texas coast. Here's a look at Tropical Storm Claudette, we still have most of the storms to the east of the center circulation, meaning it is not perfectly symmetrical by any means. Uh, when uh, the tropical entity is symmetrical, that bodes well for strengthening. But uh, even so, the storminess could become more over the center, and the shearing winds, which has kept it weak, say, two or three days ago, could subside a little bit, and that could uh, create some strengthening. But uh, landfall probably sometime tomorrow night into Wednesday morning along the southern Texas coast. Right now, it is helping to produce a little rain along the southeastern Louisiana coast. Otherwise, you can see the tropicals, uh, the tropics along the Atlantic. We're looking relatively quiet, although a disturbance uh, affected Puerto Rico. Enrique is no more in the eastern Pacific. Now here's Kim. And Marshall Cease joins us now from your weather today. Good morning, Marshall. Good morning, Kim. How are you guys going to track tropical, tropical storm Claudette? Well, Kim, uh, uh, hurricane expert Dr. Steve Lyons is here. He'll keep us up to date, <clears throat> excuse me, on Claudette's progress. And Jeff Morrow will continue his live reports from the Texas coast as residents prepare for the storm. Now, Kim takes a look at the impact this summer's heat could have on your winter power bills. Uh, I hate to say it. It looks like a hot summer could mean a costly winter for many people. How can that be? Linda Bell explains the connection in the Bloomberg Money Barometer. Good morning. Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan says the recent rise in gas prices means consumers can expect significantly higher heating bills this winter. Greenspan says the weather will be the main factor in determining gas prices in the coming months. A hot summer followed by a cold winter could send natural gas supplies lower and in turn push prices higher. Natural gas prices have soared nearly 84 percent in the past year. And now utility companies and other government officials are warning consumers that they may pay more to heat their home next winter. Last month, Energy Secretary Spencer Abraham said Midwest homeowners may have to pay $915 for gas heat next winter. That's a 19 percent increase from a year earlier. Swings in gas prices make it difficult for companies using the fuel to estimate energy costs. Unusually cold winter weather drains supplies of the heating fuel, leaving them about 60% lower than a year before in late March. For the Weather Channel, I'm Linda Bell with the Bloomberg Money Barometer. It is Monday, but let's think about that weekend as we make our plans weather-wise. You can see wet weather because of a front around the Outer Banks of North Carolina, but looking dry in Boston and Providence and a chance of some wet weather in Chicago Saturday. That's a look at Saturday, but more concentrated rains perhaps in Cleveland and Pittsburgh and Cleveland around the Museum of Rock and Roll or the Rock and Roll Museum. And a quick check on travel, Dennis. No rock and roll in the eastern seaboard. Looks like they might find a few scattered showers, including New York City. I think that'll be popping up later in the day out on Long Island this morning. Philadelphia and D.C., showers in your offing primarily this morning. Take along the umbrella, and we'll keep you updated. And we'll keep you updated tomorrow morning, starting at 5 on First Outlook. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Goodbye. And, uh, have a safe day, and stay with us for your weather today. All I want is a room somewhere A comfy space I don't have to share A workout A pool Breakfast complimentary, yeah And a welcome, Mr. Watson Good to see ya And how about a fresh cup of joe? At Hampton Inn, you've got it, people From folks who'll do everything to make you feel completely loverly, utterly satisfied We love having you here For further information, go to weather.com slash interstate forecast. Hampton Inn, we love having you here.
They called us uh, the angels of technology because we work so far up in the heavens. Here on the plains rises a marvel of engineering, a giant radio antenna built to make... Co Wednesday, we'll see a chance of thunderstorms. Look for fair skies on Thursday. And on Friday, expect a chance of thunderstorms. Time now for your tropical update here on the Weather Channel. I'm Janetta Jones. Today's top weather story, Tropical Storm Claudette. And we take a look at the latest information on that tropical storm. As of 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time, this is where it's centered, 285 miles east-southeast of Corpus Christi, Texas. The winds are at 65 miles per hour, so it's getting into the strong tropical storm category. Movement north-northwest at 6 miles per hour. There you have the pressure. Now, we do have some watches and warnings in effect. I want to go over those with you right off the bat. Tropical storm advisories. These are the warnings from Cameron, Louisiana to St. Louis, San Louis Pass in Texas. Those are tropical storm warnings. We have hurricane warnings in effect beyond that to Baffin Bay, Texas, and then a tropical, I should say, a hurricane watch from Baffin Bay to Brownsville, Texas. So a lot of uh, different kinds of watches and warnings in effect that you need to be aware of. This is a look at the satellite vantage point with tropical storm Claudette and it's running into some interference from an upper low just to its west which is uh, helping it to not really move very much but we think that that is going to give way eventually to a ridge of high pressure and that will sort of pull it into the Texas coast over the next 24 to 36 hours it could actually strengthen a little more could strengthen to hurricane status so that's why we're very concerned that's why we're watching and waiting and we're going to be monitoring the situation very closely. You can see with this tropical storm, we're already feeling the effects, the impact, as far north as Louisiana and along the Gulf Coast with some cloud cover at the very least and also talking about some scattered showers that are affecting you already in parts of extreme southern Louisiana. Eventually, we think it is going to start to move more towards the Texas Gulf Coast. At least that's the official track from the Hurricane Center. Right now, as you look at this particular vantage point, the water vapor imagery, it is encountering some, uh, a bit of an upper low here that's going to be giving way to a ridge of high pressure. At least that's the official forecast. Now, here's the projected path, taking it Monday night into Tuesday morning, closer and closer. See how we think it's going to start recurving back towards central Texas so that it may make landfall Tuesday night or Wednesday morning, depending on where it is along the coast. Of course, it would arrive here a little quicker than here in uh, central and southern sections of Texas. So by Thursday morning, it could, in fact, be moving all the way over into central and western sections of Texas. Heavy rain going to be an impact, as well as some uh, tropical storm force winds, perhaps, and some high seas. So that's what we're going to be concerned about. The rough seas, obviously, and the tide's going to be a little bit of a problem. So going to be watching that very closely. That's about the biggest game in town, so to speak, as far as the tropics go. The rest of the Caribbean, all is quiet, looking real good. And as we head a little farther out into the central Atlantic, all is relatively quiet here as well. Uh, now, just off of the coast of Africa, we're seeing some waves come off of the coast of Africa, we'll wait and see if in fact they develop into anything. As we go a little farther out into the Pacific, not anything major to speak of, just some tropical waves that we're watching very closely to see if in fact anything does develop into a tropical storm and or hurricane. In the lower 48, your chances for severe weather are going to be the greatest in parts of Minnesota today as low pressure is going to be um, tracking through Iowa as well as Minnesota and on into Wisconsin. We do not have any severe thunderstorm watches in effect yet, but that could change. We do, however, have the chance for some flooding in South Carolina and North Carolina. In fact, all the way to the beaches of North Carolina, we could see that threat for some fairly strong to intense thunderstorms. I want to show you what's happening here in Minneapolis as that line of thunderstorms is ripping 
ripping on through that area into Duluth, Minnesota. So at the very least, you're getting some heavy downpours with the rain, possibly even some strong gusty winds. So bear that in mind. Along the coastline from oh, around uh, the Jersey Shore down towards the Outer Banks of North Carolina, we are seeing the effects of some scattered showers and thunder showers here. Expect a little bit more activity across the southeast as we get into the late afternoon and early evening hours. Just as we've been seeing the last several days, we could see a little more of that kind of thing from Atlanta to Charlotte to even Savannah. West, still very hot. We're expecting more heat again today. An update on that and much more coming up. The Home Depot is more than a store. It's creating a new night spot for the family. It's a new coat of paint and a new form of expression. It's making garage space for a new driver. There you go. It's always a guaranteed low price, but the Home Depot knows an investment in your home is a lot more than just a list of projects. It's an investment in your life. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Sarah started making this commercial nine years ago. Gerber Six degrees under fair skies. forecast. On Wednesday, we'll see a chance of thunderstorms. Look for fair skies on Thursday. And on Friday, expect a chance of thunderstorms. Here is the very latest on Tropical Storm Claudette. As of the 4 p.m. advisory central time, the winds 65 miles an hour. It is moving toward the north-northwest at 7, and the pressure now 989 millibars. We have hurricane warnings from High Island, Texas, down to Baffin Bay. Hurricane watches a bit farther southward. And tropical storm warnings now eastward from High Island into intercoastal city, Louisiana. Hello and welcome to the Tropical Update. I'm Carl Parker. For more on our tropical storm, we turn now to our hurricane expert, Dr. Steve Lyons. And Steve, as we look at the forecast track, what is the concern for those who live to the right of that track? Well, Carl, the system is a little bit lopsided. A lot of the heavy rain is on the right side and a lot of the strongest wind is on the north and east side. So let's look at our track or our cone of uncertainty here. I'll show you what I mean. We put into play a circulation that's on the northern side of our track. Some of the worst weather will be outside of the track. So even though this is, indicates our best uh, estimate of the track, it doesn't necessarily indicate where the biggest impact is going to be. And of course, you can see if it's on the south side of the track, down here, the biggest impact will be in the center of the cone. So be very careful that a lot of the impact can be outside of that cone, even though the cone is where we expect the uh, center of the track to be. Now here comes the circulation. This is out of the Galveston radar, right down here at the bottom of your TV screen. You see me pointing at the center there. And again, most of the rain and the strongest winds are on the south side of the circulation as it moves to the north-northwest. We still think it's going to turn toward the west-northwest and come into the central Texas coast over the next 24 to 36 hours. Keep in mind, if it doesn't turn too soon, it's going to arrive a little bit early and weather will be deteriorating over the north and central Texas coast over the next 24 hours. There's a satellite image, imagery, the circulation sitting there. And right now, other than a few passing showers and a little bit breezy weather and high surf, it's not too bad, but the weather's going to be going downhill. How about intensity? Well, we expected to make landfall as a strong storm 
or a weak Category 1 hurricane, not more than that. So the wind impact is going to be relatively small. We expect water rises of maybe three to five feet at the right front quadrant of the circulation where it makes landfall. You can see here in the greater Galveston area where the water levels are five feet or less are in light green. So those are the areas that are most vulnerable to coastal flooding from the surge. Also down farther to the south, Matagorda down to Corpus Christi, also some very light green areas there. So watch out in those areas for possible coastal flooding. In the meantime, we're going to also have some inland rainfall impacts, and we'll get details on that as we see whether or not that system makes the turn and how fast it's moving. In the meantime, the remainder of the tropical Atlantic is relatively quiet today, which is good news. We're watching a couple of tropical waves out here, but the Caribbean, if you're heading there, we're in great shape there. Off into the eastern Pacific, cruising down to southern, southern Mexico. Nothing going on there. All the thunderstorms are ill-organized and pushing west. You can see our tropical storm up here in the Gulf of Mexico. Forecast to become a hurricane, but not a strong one. Carl? Lions, we thank you very much for that. We want to quickly take a look at severe weather across the northern plains right now. And we do have a number of watch areas in effect. Tornado watches from Minnesota down into Iowa. We have a tornado warning now. Hello, it's about 50 minutes after the hour and you're just in time for the tropical update. Tropical storm Claudette continues to move closer to the Texas coast and the hurricane hunters are keeping a close eye on the strength of the storm. The Air Force team was dispatched from Biloxi, Mississippi over the weekend to check the storm's development. The 53rd Recon Squadron flies into the storm to check the latest wind speed and look for a developed eye and they will be out there, out there giving us the reports. The next report comes in at 1 o'clock Central Daylight Time. We will give you an update on its latest coordinates and what you could expect from it as they bring it in after flying out there. Here's what we're dealing with right now. You can see on our water vapor loop that it's really strengthened some on the west side of the area of low pressure. We weren't getting a lot of convection on the west side throughout the, this whole time because it's been getting sheared, but it seems like more convection is now developing to the west and a tropical storm Claudette continues to move west at eight miles per hour. That places it 200 miles east of Corpus Christi. It is fighting it, though. It wants to become a hurricane, or it's been strengthening, I should say. Right now, the pressure's at 988 millibars. It's only four m miles per hour shy of actually becoming a hurricane. Now, it is expected to continue making its way towards the Texas coast, and as it does so, it does have that potential to possibly strengthen to a hurricane before it makes landfall. Even if it doesn't make hurricane status, it will be a strong tropical storm. And we will see quite an impact of this. In fact, throughout the day, on Tuesday, we're expecting to see heavy showers at times across the Houston area. So if you have any interest at all at being, being around the beach area, your best bet is just to stay away because it is expected to continue to track its way much closer towards the beach towards the beach areas. Galveston has been getting some stronger winds as that pressure gradient is dropping. You can see it's not quite made its way or the outer bands have not quite made their way across the coast yet, but we are beginning to see a lot of moisture lifting just south of uh, the southern areas of Louisiana. All this area will be impacted by some showers throughout the day. Winds right now gusting to 40 miles per hour in the Galveston area, and we are looking at hurricane advise warnings now from High Island, Texas to the Baffin Bay, Texas, with watches on south into Brownsville, Texas. And we're also dealing with tropical storm warnings from the High Island, Texas area to intracoastal city as those seas continue to increase. In fact, by high tide, we could be looking at an additional three to five feet of water on top of that with those seas certainly increasing. And now we're dealing with the possibility of flash flooding inland. That does include Goliad, uh, Victoria, and Bee County. <laughs> forecast.